hi but for it too i hope you guys are good and well not well it's my day off i'm bored i had to go to the movies ended up not happening story for another day but what i am going to be doing though is reading as per usual but before i get into the reading i want to share with you guys review some of my favorite book favorites well some of them not so much but we're gonna be getting into that tea a little bit later on speaking of tea i'm actually drinking some right now cold tea i like my tea cold this is cold infusion watermelon flavored my favorite so i'm gonna be drinking that as i speak about my favorite thing in the whole wide world books also guys i want to show you my braids they're super long they go all the way down to the knees this length is just crazy long. I we cringe yet? Are we cringe yet? I'm actually quite excited to be filming this. Okay, enjoy. This is such a big stack. So this is going to be the shortest book review you've ever seen in your life. I'm not going to be giving away any spoilers. I'm going to be giving the synopsis, but a little bit more into detail, okay? And also this is reviewed in no particular order. Well, I'm lying. The first one is my personal favorite. Where the crowd ads sing. I actually want to sit down with someone who's, who's read the book, who's finished the book, and dissect. Because the storyline is wild. It follows the story of a young girl called Kayla, who faces abandonment issues after the loss of her mother and after being left on her own to practically raise herself abandoned by her entire family to raise herself it's a murder mystery coming of age a little bit of romance don't walk into this book expecting a lot of romance because there isn't any there isn't a lot of that okay love it 10 out of 10 book number two the alchemist there's no gray area with this book i feel like there's no gray area with this book you love it or hate it and a lot of you guys on the internet hate the alchemist and i'll not understand why would you hate on paulo Coelho's beautiful work of art you make me mad if you hate this book i read this book at a at a very beautiful time in my life i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get into deep details on that but the story follows a young boy named santiago who travels across the world -ish in search of a treasure and along the way there's obstacles which i personally call them pearls of wisdom okay in search of this treasure and he towards the end finds his treasure i'm not gonna say where but please read this it's amazing excuse me guys i made myself something to munch munch i made myself some chicken in the oven yum yum panoi <laughs> okay the chicken was just too good guys okay the fourth one is sally rooney's normal people again a lot of you guys were making so much noise on the internet on this one To be quite honest with you guys, I generally did not enjoy this one. This is a story. It is a, a young romance, teenage romance. And I'm, I feel like I'm not into that anymore. I'm a big girl, as you can see. I'm a lady. I'm a big lady. However, Sally Rooney is one hell of a writer. This is a beautiful story. I'll tell you that right now for free. Hop on this. It's a beautiful story book number i've lost counts book number five i believe um i'll be honest with you guys i generally do not appreciate poetry style this is a novel written in poetry style initially when i started reading this i was confused until um later on in the book i got to understand why she decided to go for poetry style well this book follows a girl from western africa nigeria but stays grew up in america stays in america is from quite a dysfunctional household the father and mother not really in good terms not staying together even she stays with the father who is micromanaging her quite a lot which later on in life she discovers that it was for her own good. She goes to college, rediscovers her sexuality, and a lot of things. 10 out of 10. I really loved it. 
Book number six is titled My First Time. The author is Several Women in South Africa. So my first time essentially is stories of sex and sexuality from women like you and me all across South Africa. Actually, every female should read this book. The reason why I'm saying that is because these kind of conversations are stigmatized. We never talk about it. Meanwhile, we have such similar experiences where sex and sexuality is concerned. We just never talk about these things. We find it taboo to talk about these things because it's not ladylike and all of that. BS. So read this. Honestly, this is my biggest recommend out of all the books I've mentioned. This one, just read this. Honestly, you are going to enjoy it. It's an easy read. You can finish it in a day even. I promise you. Ooh. Book number seven, The Rosy Results. I believe this is part of a trilogy, trilogy, but I've only read this out of the three. The Rosy Results. The Rosy Results is the most hilarious book I've ever read in my entire life. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. This is the most hilarious book I've ever read. It follows the story of this married couple that relocates from the uh, hometown to somewhere else. I read this a long time ago, okay? And together they share a son whom they believe to be autistic, but you will find out the more you read. Dawn, the husband, is a scientist slash doctor slash um, uh, lecturer, and the wife is a researcher. The husband says something quite controversial, and it goes viral during a lecture. And he receives a lot of heat for that for almost years and years. It's an interesting story. Go read it. So you, if you're able to finish this book, I applaud you. Anyway, um, no, Koneami, and I'm filming something for my YouTube. You're loud. Likon. Book number of lost counts again. Sing as Zela, guys. The Good People is the title of this book. I got this book as a present for my 25th birthday. Thank you. I found it really hard reading this because it's written in that old English style. About thee, thy, and it's so annoying to read. I'm not going to lie to you. Also, it was hard to read because it follows a story of a married couple, old couple, that stays somewhere in the village. They have a daughter who was married. And then the daughter had a son. The daughter dies. The husband of the daughter ships the son to the grandparents because he cannot take care of the son. Because the son cannot walk, cannot talk. He's disabled. When the son is shipped to the grandparents, the granddad dies. So leaving the grandma to take care of the son. The villagers did not know about the disabled son because they believed if you're disabled in the village, you are bringing in a curse. The grandparents decided not to tell the villagers about this, the disabled son. Essentially, when the granddad dies, the whole village has to come and mourn. It's such a difficult position for the grandmother to allow them in because now they were going to be aware of the son. Eventually, she had to allow them, and some of her, uh, some of them saw the son, including the priest, who then tried helping the son heal, the grandson heal. The witch doctor as well wanted to offer a helping hand, but the priest did not allow. It's such a beautiful story. Please read this book. Dear Life, book number of Lost Counts. Well, story time. I got myself this book right after I got vaccinated for Miss Coco V. Okay, got a Jovelan. Well, anyway, I got myself a treat after I got vaccinated this that day. So this book follows a doctor, a young lady who's a doctor. Her name is Rachel. Her father was also a GP. And she loses her father to cancer. And then she dedicates her life as a doctor into making death bearable. I'm not sure if that even makes sense. She felt like the doctors by your bedside make it such dark moments when you're about to die. She makes death bearable, uh, uh, for lack of a better word. Our 
song my best friend's mother borrowed me this book i was fascinated by the author danny atkins the author wrote one of my favorite movies from netflix it's called fractured that movie rocked my world it's traumatized me so i borrowed this book with a hope to be traumatized i was traumatized by the love triangle in this book and the entanglement of it all i actually don't know how to review this one because i'm not done reading it look at how big this is look at how chunky this is i haven't finished reading this i have to read it and return it i have to finish it and return it honestly there's not much to say about a book you haven't finished read reading because plot twist to get sana do we have more books to review yes we do guys i have to review the 5 a.m club i have to review everyone's favorite book that i hate yes i do hate it the reason why i'm not the biggest fan of the 5 a.m club is because i read it around a time i was not productive i did not have a job i was lazing around all day every day and the 5 a.m club was shoving pro productivity down my throat and i did not appreciate it honestly it was telling me what to do and i did not appreciate it my favorite thing about the 5 a.m club though is that it is self-help written in fiction style that's my favorite genre i love self-help written in fiction style even oh day every day i hate this book i genuinely stop telling me what to do okay just leave me alone leave me alone okay the last one i might cry reviewing this because this book is so close to my heart it's viola davis's finding me i got this for my birthday this year and i've been speaking about this book for the longest time ever since it was released i've been running my mouth about it so i i i had initially i had listened to all the podcasts seen all the interviews on finding me I had to read the book. I generally had to read the book. I was so happy to meet Viola Davis at her lowest point all the way up to the highest point of her life. I met her at her most vulnerable, at her strongest, and I fell in love with all parts of her. I did. So this memoir by Viola Davis, I finished reading it not so long ago and I spoke about how I've always admired her in her artistry, I've always admired her talent, on-screen talent, I've always loved and admired her for the way she carries herself as this lady and she's she's been just that to me, an artist and online person who uh, you know I, I never saw her past that point this book made me stop idolizing her in a sense that she's just someone from television i envisioned her as i almost humanized her again because we have that sense of dehumanizing our role models we think oh she's this glorious and mighty person which she is i believe she is but this book drew me closer to her even further i want to review more books but now i no guys i'm gonna i'm gonna do a part two of this if you guys like this first one i wanna i wanna go ahead and film a part two i wanna i wanna continue though a way back to happy is such a beautiful book but if you want me to review this book and more others just tell me and also i get a lot of questions from people asking me uh from people wanting to read more but they don't know how to start my advice would be start small start with a tiny tiny book something you will love and enjoy uh, uh more often times than not people want to read this big book and finish it i don't finish books i don't like if there's a book i'm reading and i find it to be tedious and i don't like it i don't finish it i move on to the next one just find something you love and enjoy start small thank you so much for watching and um
participating please like and comment i'm new to this i might or might not have made quite a lot of mistakes please be gracious and be patient with me this is a new journey for me please subscribe be part of the family but for it too i would love and appreciate for you guys to tell everyone about this and uh, um enjoy the cringe fest i guess love you guys see you next time bye